okay it may not look like it just yet with this initial slide but this uh, little tutorial is over an Excel spreadsheet problem where you're supposed to create a web page looking spreadsheet that estimates the bonus for a particular employee based on forecasted sales and their actual sales. Notice on this PowerPoint slide that the sales budget starts the entire budgetary process. We'll get to budgets in a little later chapter, but the sales budget has to be somewhat accurate so that we'll know how much to produce here. If your forecasted sales are in excess of your actual sales, then you'll have a lot of uh, inventory laying around that you didn't sell and maybe a worse problem if your forecasted sales fall short of your actual sales you'll run out of product you'll have inventory shortages but the important point here is that the sales budget starts this entire planning financial planning process the budget process here's an example of a sales budget where the budgeted sales for uh, I guess it's the second quarter April May June for a year 20,000, 50,000, and 30,000 units respectively were forecasted at a selling price of $10 per unit here that's constant, creating total sales in each of those three months of 200,000, 500,000, and 300,000 respectively, or a million dollars for the quarter. But this is just a precursor to the Excel exercise that is to incentivize accurate forecasted sales, or as accurate as we can get. Now that hopefully we've shown the importance of why we need accurate sales forecasts, let's look at how we might incentivize that on the part of our sales forecasters. If we look at this incentive model, employees or sales forecasters are going to get bonuses based on where their forecasts are relative to the actual sales. If you look at this top model, where why is actual sales and why hat? is forecasted sales. This first model covers a situation in which your actual sales are in excess of your forecasted sales. The bonus any one employee is going to get is based on their forecasted sales times some parameter. In this case I've made it 4% here. Plus the excess of their actual sales over the forecasted sales times again parameter. In this case it's 2%. So the bonus an employee would get in this situation, again where their actual sales exceed the forecasted sales, is some percentage of the forecasted sales, in this case 4%, plus 2% of the excess of the actual sales over the forecasted sales. Now in the other situation in which your forecasted sales are in excess of the actual sales, stated otherwise the actual sales fall short of what the optimistic sales forecaster forecasted, then this model pertains. In this model the bonus is your forecasted sales again times 4%, so that is common amongst those two different formulae. But in this case there's a disincentive, a penalty if you will, for having your actual sales that are less than the forecasted sales. So again, we've got an optimistic forecaster. They've forecasted selling 100 units and they only sold 90, or it might be $100,000 worth of goods and they sold $90,000 worth of goods. But then that excess of forecasted sales over actual sales times another parameter, this B3, which I've made to be 5% in this case, is the penalty or a reduction in the bonus, which again, has that fundamental component being their forecasted sales times that first parameter four percent. To summarize, in the first scenario the actual sales exceed the forecasted sales so they've actually sold more, a little bit more than they forecasted. In the second scenario they were optimistic and they forecasted more than they actual, actually sold and so we have some excess inventory laying around. I guess the, the theory in this model is that it's better to have a little bit of sales in excess of what you forecast and then to fall a little bit short. But either way, because the parameter on the forecasted sales, in this case 4%, is greater than the parameter on that excess, which I've made to be 2% here, 
incentivizes accurate sales forecast. You would re much rather have the, the number multiplied for your bonus. You'd much rather have that number multiplied by 4% than simply taking advantage of the 2% parameter on B2, which is your actual sales in excess of your forecasting. So what I want you to do is model these two portions of the formula in Excel so that you can have your employees go into let's pretend it's a website and your employees go in there and input their actual and forecasted sales data for the year and they can tell exactly what their bonus is going to be or they can do an advance of the forecast which again would help incentivize those being accurate sales forecast we want to notice down here we want to do that in one cell only once you've created the formula, I want you to put in nine different pairs of actual and forecasted sales data and put those in your spreadsheet somewhere. You can create them automatically or you can just manually put what the result is of each of the nine pair of forecasted and actual sales data points. And again, just go ahead and put that in your regular spreadsheet. Now to do the actual model, it helps if you've had a little experience with the if statement within Excel. To illustrate the if statement, I've got six, seven grades here. These are grades from, let's say, your midterm exam as a class. There's seven of you, and I've got grades anywhere from, what, low of 42 to a maximum of 100. So the if statement is in the form of if this condition then print this result otherwise provide this result and what I'm doing here with this test or this condition is saying every student that gets below a 70 has to come visit me to discuss why the midterm exam score maybe wasn't as high as it needed to be otherwise just a zero in here and I just wanted to illustrate an alphabetic versus a versus a numeric character in there so notice if you put visit as you, what you want to print out if the first value is true I'm sorry that first condition is true you need to put alphabetics in quotes let's let's create that if statement from scratch so let me clear the contents here go back so equals kicks in the formula over here and since I've used if frequently um, and in fact the last function I used it, it pops up but if it hasn't then you can go in and, and search for a function if I just put if and hit go here's my if statement I hit OK and it gives me the the uh, dialog box to actually show me how to create that formula so my logical test is this cell I can click on it before is if that's less than 70 so the less than key and then 70 then I want them to come visit me in my office so I'm going to note those students that receive less than a 70 on the midterm by again in quotes <clears throat> putting visit in that blank if that condition's true again their exam score being less than 70 otherwise I'll put uh, zero I could put no visit I could leave it blank if I hit spacebar once it'll just leave it blank let's try that one just as a difference between what we did the first time and you see it's it's blank here if I drag that down because of relative cell referencing it'll check each one of those boxes and it'll tell these three students Sally Joe and Mike to come visit me so that illustrates the if statement However, if we go back, notice that you've got two formulae here. So it really has what we call a nested if statement in there because the first condition would be if your actual sales exceeded your forecasted sales. In the second condition, you've got forecasted sales greater than actual. You can do it as a nested if statement. You don't have to because again if we highlight this if statement up there the the first scenario could be for instance if actual sales exceed forecasted sales 
then you would then you would exercise that first formula going back then you would do this calculation otherwise your otherwise condition could be this calculation the if statements are always in the form of if a condition is true then you do this otherwise you do this and notice that the space is also surrounded by uh, quotation marks but if you want to get a little bit fancier and you'll use this in another project later on we have what's called nested if statement and you can see that that's a little bit more complicated than our original but what's happening here is if this condition is true and my condition runs clear over to that first comma in this case that's if B13 this cell here is greater than or equal to 89.99 then that student deserves a grade of A then instead of one single otherwise for instance an F grade we have another if statement so our otherwise situation is executing the second if and that is if B13 is greater than 79.99 then a B well, what happens with these over to here what happens to those two tests essentially is if B13 is greater than the the 90 percent 89.99 just so we include the 90s in the A category it takes care of those as, as being A's if they fell below that at least down to 79.99 grade then they receive a B and notice that nested series continues until you come over here and if B13 is greater than 59.99 it's a D and then to clean up all the other situations which would be grades 59.99 or below you have an F so that's an illustration of the professor's use in fact of nested if if then statements to summarize if that condition is true then you execute this otherwise you execute this which in this case is the next individual test where if B13 is greater than 80 percent or 79.99 then you execute this otherwise otherwise you default to this next otherwise which happens to be another if statement then and here's the type of spreadsheet I want as a result of this process uh, we've got Mason Super Shoes here that uh, a student a few years ago created. Let me scroll down. She's got instructions for her managers where they're to input their forecast and actual sales with the bonus being the result. So the forecasted sales, let's say we had an example of $100,000 earlier in forecasted sales and the actual sales at 90000 so they fell short notice the bonus is forty four hundred dollars if we change this actual sales to say be a hundred thousand dollars then notice the bonus goes up let's get real extreme and let's say she forecasted this manager a million dollars worth of sales is that a million yes commas are sometimes useful and it turned out to be uh, actual sales of a hundred thousand then theoretically we're gonna ask him to pay some compensation back to the firm on the other hand let's say they forecasted let's try commas this time forecasted twenty thousand dollars of the sales and the actual sales were fifty thousand then we've got a decent bonus down here of nineteen hundred dollars let's get really crazy with the actual sales with the forecasted sales of twenty thousand dollars and let's get really crazy say there was a million dollars worth of sales so thirty a thirty thousand dollar bonus if uh, the actual sales exceeded forecasted sales by that amount but again let's see what she's using for her parameters up here uh, she doesn't say I like to externalize the parameters where you put the the 
B1, B2, B sub 1, B sub 2, B sub 3 over here so you can actually see them although with this website you may not want to show those to your employees with whatever parameters you would like to use I would just suggest however that you use a punitive parameter that is somewhere around the B, B sub 1 parameter and but the most important criteria here is that your B sub 2 parameter that additive parameter has to be less than your B sub 1 parameter so just to illustrate why that needs to happen the B sub 1 being greater than B sub 2 notice if I have forecasted sales of 20,000 actual sales of a million then I have a thirty thousand four hundred dollar bonus but look what happens if I change this I'll use commas again change that for, to forecasted sales of a million my bonus is greater than it would have been that fifty thousand is greater than that thirty thousand what was it thirty thousand four hundred previously so you have an incentive under this model to have accurate sales forecasts and one final reminder I want the result in this case the fifty thousand dollars to be in one cell I don't want these managers having to decide if my forecasted sales are greater than actual then my bonus is this or if my actual sales are greater than forecasted my, my bonus is this don't let the managers have to decide which cell is relevant create a formula to where regardless of whether forecasts are greater than actual or actual greater than forecasted that one single cell there represents our bonus for the period thanks and good luck